welcome Erin Benjamin, the executive director of Music Canada Live for her annual State of the Nation address. Ladies and gentlemen, Erin Benjamin. State of the Nation. Uh, hi everyone, uh, it's amazing to be back here for our third year. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, it's great to be able to celebrate your hard work over the last 12 months. Um, people stage left, I don't wanna feel like my back is too saying, I see you over there. Um, it's been a really important year for your association uh, and for the live music industry in general. Those of you who know me know how much I look forward to this moment, making this annual speech. Um, and this year, by the end of it, I would like uh, to have inspired you to do two things. The first is to join Music Canada Live as a member if you haven't yet. Production companies, promoters, agents, festivals, suppliers, venues, we need you. Why? Because number two, I think this is the most uh, important part of this seven or eight minutes. It's for me to help you see yourself as part of the bigger picture of this industry, where you fit, imagining what's possible, and how you can help us to ensure that every single facet of your work is valued and respected by governments at every level, by taxpayers, and by other industries. So I was thinking about how to do that, and I decided that I would start by sharing one of my favorite new ideas. Um, it's a concept called cultural parody. I first read about it thanks to the work of this amazing guy named Mark David at the UK Venues Trust, which is an organization in London, England, dedicated to working on behalf of venues to change government policy and attitudes around live music. I'm not sure if he coined the phrase, but it's in his writing where I first came across it and it got me thinking. So the definition of parody, which is a word we've all been thinking a lot about lately, is the condition or is the state uh, or condition of being equal. So Mark argues that live music spaces, uh, which are not regarded as an essential part of the economic, cultural, and social fabric of the UK, must be. He's primarily talking about grassroots venues, but live music generally, uh, especially from a policy pers perspective, is not equal here either, not yet. Despite growing clarity around how and why live is critical to artists, to neighborhoods, to cities and towns, despite all of the economic and tourism impacts, the success of the Music Cities efforts, despite all of these things, live music simply isn't equal. Not in planning, not in development, not in resource allocation, and not in policy. You know, prevailing funding and policy standards in this country have been built in response to a very strong organized leadership. For more than 40 years now, the conversation has been focused through a lens that sees live music stakeholders as important, absolutely, but not important enough to be regarded with true parity. Based on much of today's cultural and economic pol policy, you, the people behind live music are more often regarded as indirectly impacting the music business. In this way, you are not equal. And this is for lots of reasons, many of which we need to own. And own them we are. Things are changing, our voice is getting louder, and obviously there are organizations who are part of the solution, such as the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, who in partnership with the live music industry in this province recently launched something called the Vision for Ontario's Live Music Sector, which is an historic and pivotal moment for us all. The leadership from the OMDC as well as, as, well as Creative BC, certainly. But there are gaps, especially federally and with regard to small clubs, venues, DIY spaces, and frankly, the concert sector generally. The music industry has evolved dramatically over the last 20 years. Playing live shows and touring, as we all know, is simply fundamental to an artist's ability to make a living today. And as a result, we're all connected. And I say this every year on this stage, we are therefore all in this together. But we haven't achieved cultural parity, and we must if we are to reach our true potential as a sector. As Canadian Heritage Minister Melanie Jolie begins the timely exercise of reviewing the Canada Music Fund, we will be there demonstrating how our members are directly helping to create and are essential to a thriving and healthy domestic and international scene. 
The priorities of a contemporary Canada Music Fund must reflect the way today's music industry actually works. It's a vitally important fund and crucial to those it currently serves as well as those it should serve to ensure the greatest impact for our artists. In order to change attitudes and entrench your priorities in the nation's cultural policy framework, Music Canada Live has been planting seeds and building relationships that are making a difference. Uh, the renewal of Amplify BC at $7.5 million means that live music stakeholders of all shapes and sizes, non and for profit, small venues and big, indoors and out, are, can, are able to access support. In the next few weeks, Music Canada Live will release our very own e economic impact study called Hear the Beat, the Economic Impact of Live Music in BC, which will paint an incredible picture of the industry in that province for the very first time with statistics that matter and are central to the story that we are telling. Now, I know you don't all work in BC, but this isn't just about one province. It's about facts and knowing things with certainty like our contribution to GDP and job creation. It's about counting ourselves and putting numbers in front of eyeballs that illustrate the collective size and scope of this room. And we are amassing the evidence that we need to move the Canadian live music industry towards cultural parity. It's clearly been a transformative year in the industry um, from Me Too and the really positive things that are happening as a result of incredible organizations like Women in Music Canada, Across the Board, Keras, Key Change, and the 46 music industry associations who signed on to the recent nationwide anti-harassment code of conduct, including Music Canada Live. We saw Manchester, we saw Las Vegas, we've seen the loss of key venues and festival attrition, changing trends in ticket sales and legislation, and you have seen Music Canada Live respond and lead at the grassroots across industry and with government. And as a direct result, governments are learning why strong ties with the live music sector makes sense. Music strategies. Ottawa has one. Vancouver's is about to be approved. Uh, Barry Simcoe is getting ready. Halifax is working it out. Fredericton is on it with uh, many, many other cities beginning to leverage the value of their own live music economies. This is all very meaningful stuff for you to know because it represents a convergence of thinking and demonstrates how we are creating the conditions for your concerts and your artists and your rooms and your companies to thrive from coast to coast to coast. We started this conversation about cultural parity because no one else is gonna start it for us, right? And it takes time and resources and support. Our work would be impossible without our partners, such as Creative BC, the OMDC, and the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport, especially Kevin Finnerty and his great team at the ministry. But most of all, it's about all of you and our over 180 members now from across Canada. The arc of live music in this country is shaped by you, and it's shaped by people like Jesse Kumagai and our amazing board of directors, past and present, you are the ones who create the opportunity for our story to be told and who are absolutely instrumental in helping us to achieve what we set out to do with you only three years ago. And while we've just scratched the surface, there can be no doubt that when the smallest DIY pop-up and the largest concert promoter and everyone in between are viewed as equally important to the career development of artists and the quality of life in our cities, when we see all of your needs reflected and entrenched in funding programs and in policy when the stages upon which our artists stand are recognized as the heart of both this business and community, we will have achieved cultural parity and with that, heighten our ability to do what we are best at, which is putting incredible artists in front of fans and changing lives through live music. Number one. Please join Music Canada Live if you haven't, and thank you to those of you who have. And number two, see yourselves in this story. I want to thank Neil and Dania, Victoria Shepard, uh, Jane Kattisharp, and I would like to congratulate all of the nominees and the recipients. We have a very diverse group this year. Bigger turnout than ever, more nominations, more voting. Uh, it's really been an incredible process. I'm very grateful uh, to Neil for this opportunity. Uh, congratulations to all of you, and uh, on behalf of Music Canada Live, thank you very much.